how can you switch from a general IT service job to software engineering? That's a question asked on Quora that I really wanted to tackle separately, simply because a lot of people starting from you know, various industries, from uh, kind of uh, college graduates uh, learning foreign languages or anything completely unrelated to computer science, are often inclined to start dealing with software engineering, even if they don't have kind of the right basis, the right, uh, you know, initial foundation for joining the industry. And a lot of people learning, uh, le working in IT are generally suitable for a software engineering job following the right track, but they don't necessarily know it and they do think they've kind of segmented or fragmented or kind of joined a completely different venture, which has nothing to do with what they wanted to do in the first place. So let's cover software engineering in a nutshell. Software engineering is the craft of building software applications or any other types of applications such as mobile, web, server, embedded, whatever it is, uh, through programming, analysis, by utilizing algorithms and the suitable data structures. That's pretty much in a nutshell. Of course, there's, there are other ways to put it, but that's pretty much what software engineering is in a nutshell. But what you really need to think through is what is the learning cycle or what the software and engineering entails in the first place. For example, if you get a you know random software engineer out on the street working in a kind of mid-sized company innovating building software you know applications, what's kind of the best profile? What are companies looking for when they kind of hire or shape that uh, software developer in the best possible manner, in a, in a way that generates the best ROI for them, in a way that's most flexible for them, you know, being able to solve a large suite of problems, being able to use that uh, person as a mentor, as a coach, as a trainer, as a senior developer, tech lead, technical project manager, and basically scale them uh, up to the roof. It's something uh, we've been analyzing for a while. With behavioral-based questions, there's uh, a way to kind of analyze your core components or your core specialties or your kind of uh, core traits that you're looking from people when you want to scale them. Kind of that's one of the ways to, to make career progression for a given individual over the course of 10 years. You get the, the basic foundation, something that's on a, on a company level, then you get the kind of the foundations for the specific job title, and then you kind of keep scaling them from a, you know, entry level, junior, mid-level, uh, senior, tech lead, and whatever it is forward. But every time you kind of add up a specific type of uh, trait, a specific type of, of um, you know, a, a, a key skill, or a key specialty that this person profiles in. It could be communication, leadership, uh, negotiation skills, tackling complex problems, uh, and of course, hard skills as well. But we are mostly talking about some form of uh, soft skills. So I digress. The, the main topic here again is uh, software engineering and transitioning from IT service to software engineering. A software engineer, uh, you know, the, the right type of software engineer has a traditional background in the sense of the types of skills required or the types of skills taught during computer science classes or you know university programs or things like that and once again i'm not saying that this is the right path to start with i'm not saying that you should necessarily start with a university in computer science a lot of things are outdated a lot of things are taught in a in the wrong way but in a nutshell a uh, computer science program teaches you computer architectures you know what's going on behind the scenes, under the hood, on a computer system. Uh, it teaches you operating systems, it teaches you networks, basic programming languages, algorithms, data structures, collections, things like that, like the, the root of every single application because programming by itself, the craft, producing the code is only possible if you know the logic and logic is a combination of algorithm with the right data structures and something that you can bundle and compile with everything else within the software development ecosystem. For example, web application, let's, let's take a WordPress application as, uh, as a side example. So WordPress is a content management system built in PHP and JavaScript running on the MySQL database engine, which is, of course, mostly operated with SQL. In order to run that, you need a LAMP or LAMP stack, which is you know, best case scenario, a Linux operating system, which has installed a web server like Apache or Nginx, PHP, 
not PHP for Apache or PHP FEM for Nginx, uh, and MySQL, which is, again, the source of information, the source of data. All of those are different types of servers. And then the programming code itself is analyzing different steps and procedures after a browser request loops into the server and says, hey, I want to open this page, which this page requires, uh, goes through the web server, the web server goes to the programming language, translates that, uh, finds the right route, which is kind of handling that request and so on and so on and so on. So it's a series of combinations of things that are pretty much going on behind the scenes. But once you know the basics, once you know the foundations, again, computer architectures, networks, operating systems and so forth, it's pretty much a no brainer because on a conceptual level, it's all the same with different kind of architectures and programming languages. Sure, technologies may be different. Sure, some paradigms may be different as well, but in a nutshell, it's pretty much all the same. If you've worked in IT so far as a, you know, IT support guy, even, you know, computer maintenance person or, or anything else revolving that kind of specialty, you have a competitive advantage when applying for a software development job because you probably already know hardware. You can, you know, differentiate the CPU from the RAM memory or the hard drive and everything else behind the scenes, of course. Uh, or you can, you know, you're kind of considered to be a power user of the operating system you know what's the difference between a 32-bit windows and a 64-bit windows uh, you know what sort of io operations occur after writing data on the disk and so on and so on again you don't necessarily have to know that in depth but you have the basics because again programming is all about storing data and managing data through different algorithms routing requests trying to find the right the most effective function to execute something to store some data process it parse it back, return it to a user or store it somewhere again and so on and so on. And all that data is stored uh, in different collections and those collections are again are stored in memory and then the list goes on. So you, you need that basic foundational knowledge in order to step in as a professional software engineering student. And again, if you're working in IT and if you know some of those things, it's really easy to kind of get a programming book and take it to the next level. Just uh, Try to teach yourself syntax or, you know, enroll in a bootcamp or any other, even Udemy course or Lind or whatever it is. Just learn the programming foundations and then start writing code. It's all about experience. But you already know the things that are going to be a bottleneck otherwise. The things that are going to pop up like, hey, I'm getting an out of uh, memory exception or, hey, uh, I'm getting an infinite loop or something else that's pretty weird. I don't know what this means. I don't know what causes it. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know why this is a problem in the first place. I don't understand servers. I don't know how they work together and how they play well together and so on and so on. Those are the foundational things. Those, this is the foundational knowledge that other IT workers more often than not have. That's why a lot of hackers have been, you know, gamers early on that started with kind of cracking video games because they didn't have money or folks who tried to again crack uh, phone machines or anything else along the lines or people who are really geeky trying to find the best uh, you know smartphone model or the best laptop trying to figure out what's the difference be between l1 cache and l2 cache and so on and so on like the geeky type trying to figure out what's going on under the surface what's the difference how to make it better how to execute it be uh, better how to fine-tune all those layers under the hood again, how to squeeze the most out of performance, what are the security leads going on, and so on and so on. Again, the rest is mainly syntax, the rest is pretty much learning the, the concepts of specific programming frameworks, and again, how to leverage them from a programming standpoint. But once you know the foundational knowledge of how computer systems work, it's really easy to make the switch to software development over the course of four to six months if you really hustle hard or at least within a year.